course, we accept the amended minutes. Did I think that? <coughs> Second. Hey John, can you hear us? You're you're muted. Yes, I just heard you now. Okay, great. Okay. Great. I'm not hearing everybody. Can you hear us? Can I you, hear you. Can you hear this one? Is this better, John? I hear you, yes. Okay. Um, would you like to vote? We just voted the minutes, um, just as you were showing up. So would you like to vote, or you want to just, we'll move on? I'll abstain. Okay. Um, so... Andrea Leibson is going to be joining us and she'll be able to talk about the plan on the top of the come tuck. Um, so as soon as she shows up, we'll do that. And then um, Dan Pallotta, who's the OPM um, for the 1888 building, will be here at 630 um, and we'll discuss the 1888 building warrant article then. Um, so pending... Andrea. Oh, wait, wait. <clears throat> okay. Um, so let's just wander through. So Article 1 is going to be passed over. That's the um, unanticipated prior year bills, and there aren't any, right? Plus Correct. The deal? Okay. Um, so we will skip Article 1. Article 2 is the mini splits. Um, do you want to talk about this? So basically, um, we have our final phase of the uh, air conditioning mini split um, installation. Um, I don't have the exact figure in front of me, but oh, here we go. I do have the exact figure in front of me. Um, so uh, ca the Capital Improvement Planning Committee uh, voted to recommend um, this project in the amount of $29,730 uh, to finish it out. So um, this was given a priority one, one out of five out of all of our priorities, and, and that's because um, of uh, all the different criteria that we look at, things like, you know, pre-funded projects, one that's, um, you know, multi-year um, safety and comfort of the kids, stuff like that. So yeah, uh, capital, capital did recommend this one. Is this rebate funds from previous or is that this is? A good portion of it is. So um, I don't have that exact figure in, in my head, but I, it's around 22,000 mm -hmm. that we had received as a rebate that had to go into the general fund because it was from a previous year. And so that just rolled into free cash. So most of it is is due to that. Okay. Yeah. Um, rebate from rebate from whom? Wait, from EverSource, and that was to um, it was for that we we initially funded the project at seventy thousand, and we did I think eight or nine units, and then um, rebates we had, and we've done other years of this project. So the money that we had in free cash, about twenty two thousand five something, is. Um, 
its rebates from other years. We still have another rebate coming, um, which we're not sure when that'll arrive, but it, it, another about 34,000 coming from Eversource. Probably for, for the for the ones that we just did this summer that Correct. that you Maybe, voted but, and approved at yeah. at the April meeting. Correct. Um, so yeah. So we have we have received several rebates, but part of the rebates that we received in fiscal 24 was from an expenditure in fiscal 24 that they had actually spent the money out of the out of the school choice fund mm -hmm. for. Yeah. So it it was able to be applied against that. But the 22,000 was for a rebate from something we spent in 2023. So the only choice was to put it into the general fund and let it roll into free cash. Yep. So we don't have a motion on the table. Let's get a motion on the table and then we'll discuss further. Does anybody want to make the motion? Motion to approve Article 2. Mm -hmm. To recommend. Uh, to recommend Article 2. Okay. I don't think your, your is working yeah. either, is it? I think it is. Oh, oh okay, good. Any yeah, right further up. discussion? Oh, go ahead, John. Oh, you're muted. Sorry. Is this artic Article 2 we're talking about as far as the mini split goes? Article 2, it's the, uh, yeah, the HVAC system for Deerfield Elementary. Thank you. Any further discussion? Questions? John? No? Okay. Um, we will do a roll call vote. Uh, start with Jim. James Camby is aye. Beth Brown, aye. Dave Sharp, aye. What? Mark Brennan, aye. Julie Chalf and I. John? You're muted. John Pereski, aye. All right, that's unanimous. Hello? Oh, it did. Yep. Look at that. Oh, did you just fix it? No, no. No, it's just it's magic. Magic. Huh? magic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> did you think you just shorting out? Yeah, I'm shorting down. All right. <laughs> Article 5 is the 1888. We're going to skip that. Article 6 is oh. Oh. Andrea. Oh. What about 3? Um, oh, thanks. Article 7. Is Andrea again? Wait a minute. Am did I you, reading this right? What's well, article three, six? three and four, did you do? Oh, six we already voted. Oh, you already did three, two, right? Three, oh, I oh, see. Yeah, three, I turned four, the page. Yeah. Yep. That's my problem. Three, article three. <laughs> Let's do article. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's do article three. But it's being passed over. Isn't this the one you said it's being paid for? By That's being passed over. Oh, so oh, I yes. did get just a little bit of feedback because we talked about it so much last meeting. Um, they, the select board voted to use a combination of ARPA funds and money already in hand to fund this. Um, we have a solid estimate that John Petrick presented to the select board. Yep. Um, they have been working kind of hand in hand with the DEP. DEP has been out here with them going through and looking at it. So it feels very well controlled and the scope of work seems very well known and, yep. um, it, it, uh, I yeah. think in response to all the questions that we had, it sounded like they were proceeding along in a um, very nice manner. Yep. And um, and we don't need to worry about it because they're not spending extra funds. So we will yep. skip Article 3. Article right. 4 um, was actually our recommendation, and we voted to recommend. So it says Finance Committee recommendation, yes, down here. We haven't actually voted this warrant article yet. We've just... Sure. Um, we voted to request the select board to put it on there. So uh, does anybody have any discussion about Article well, 4? Let's go ahead and, and dot the I's I then. Think we should. Um, I move that we recommend Article 4. Second. All right. Any discussion? No. Um, I, I don't think we've talked here. The, the free cash got certified at... 1.859 million. Yep. Yeah, so it's pretty high. So the 300,000 seems like a reasonable thing to do with it. Yep. Um, anybody have any questions or discussion? Yeah, I do. 
Go ahead, John. Uh, what's this going to cost the average single household taxpayer? Do we know? Do we have a rough idea? So this isn't costing them anything. This is just, you mean, just to put the money in the... the yeah, because this is just coming from free cash. Well, it's money that could have been used for other things, though. Say it again, John? It's money that could have, could, free cash, it could be used for other things. So may, maybe it won't be taxed, but <clears throat> there is a, it, it's coming out, it's, it's coming out of the taxpayer's pocket at some time. Wouldn't that be next year's budget? Yeah, but it's put into a general stabilization fund. So it's pretty much just putting it into savings. Yeah, spending it. Um, instead of spending it on something. Um, we could figure that out, but probably not quickly off the top of my head. Um, All right, let's move on. You know, if, if this is money that that in the spring we would have needed for a capital project or to support the budget, you know, I guess in the spring you worry about that then and maybe you take it back out of general stabilization, but this is trying to replenish the savings that we we would like to have for any catastrophic events. Right? <clears throat> okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Was this also the provision that was going to help with our um, bonding and interest rates and all that? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, let's do a roll call vote. Me with Jim. James Camby is aye. Jeff Brown, aye. Dave Sharp, aye. Mark Brennan, aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. John Pereski, aye. All right. That's unanimous 600. All right. Um, uh, all right. I apologize. I'm having so much trouble. Article one, we're passing over. Article two is done. Article three is passing over. Article four is done. Article 5, we're going to wait until 6.30 when Dan shows up. Article 6, we have already voted. Article 7 and 8 are the um, the land on top of the Pumtuck. So we will do Article 9 and then come back to those. So Article 9 is a citizen's petition um, for basically using clickers at town meeting um actually christopher since you're here I, do we have an estimate for what the clickers would cost or anything uh no i i do not have that information at my fingertips unfortunately okay that's fine thank you um so i can tell you unscientifically that i just reached out to a company that does clickers and they gave me a price of i think 13,800 for the clickers. I did not ask if there's like annual mm. fees or anything. Does anybody there, know? There, there are annual fees. Uh, I, I believe Cassie sent you a request, right? Yeah. Let's yeah. Meet. So maybe you could speak to that better than anybody else. Let's speak to Skipper on that one. Capital actually decided not to recommend this one, um, mainly because it's a cart and horse situation. We don't have bylaws in place to even do this um we capital wanted to see if um this citizen's petition went through i mean the citizen's petition is basically a recommendation it's not actually something that requires us to do this right can't hear you one of the other things that came up was the fact that um this essentially th there's a couple problems with this um some of it may be financial related but it essentially turns um uh, it, it essentially turns all of our voting into a secret ballot if we chose to do that. And um, if we were to do it article by article, we, we already have a mechanism for doing this. We have paper ballots. So there were a lot of reasons mm -hmm. for us to simply not recommend it. Okay. okay. I think John had a question and then Jim. John? Um, what if there's more than 300 people that want to vote? Yeah. What happens? Uh, I think you'd have to not use them. 
Um, yeah, that was another thing that came up is uh, the quote that we have is for 300 of these. What happens if 301 people show up? What happens if 40 of them don't work? Do we even want to be in the business of buying and maintaining these? Should we be looking at services that might be able to come in and provide them? There's just so many things that have to happen before we can even get to the point where we're purchasing them that um, we you know, didn't want to do that as capital. I, I think, I think um, just in support of it, um, I, I know Cassie said that she's talked to a lot of communities that are now using them and like them. Um, she also got a $3,000 grant to help pay for them if, if we decide to go that route. So just, just so you're aware uh, of that, and I, uh, you know, we have the money. Um, if we don't spend it on that, I think she can spend it on something else for elections. But I was just going to say, not, not necessarily pro or con, but just, just what you said, that presumably somebody can reach out to a few other towns and just sort of give us a – come maybe and give us a spiel – to address some of these sort of obvious questions that pop up that we don't yeah. really have answers for because we haven't experienced it yet. Yeah, and I do believe there is a maintenance cost. I mean, certainly you're going to have to maintain them every year, right. um, and I don't remember what that is, and I don't know if she put that on the application or not. But yep. yes, uh, uh, I, I was also going to ask about n what n number of units that cost estimate was based on. Three hundred. Yeah. Um, when my wife and I were discussing this the other night, we were trying to come up with ways to abuse this system, and one of them was that people could show up, get a clicker, hand it to their neighbor, and leave. Mm -hmm. <coughs> That's what happened when I was in college, actually. Uh, so <laughs> this is not a finance thing per se, but we would all hand uh, – it was freshman bio. You know, yeah. we would all see people handing them to each other. They would – you know, some people would come in tow with five or ten of these things. So presumably someone could go in, get checked in, get one of the clickers, stick around for one article, and then leave and then ask, uh, hand their transponder to someone else. Um, and again, like for, for me, it's like it's, if, if we need to do this, we already have a method of doing it. It's, you know, the paper ballot. Cheaper. Well, I'm just curious. What are they using for in a big bio class? I mean, you're not taking uh, for votes. Take, uh, for taking attendance. It's so just essentially, attendance? So you're just saying um, Well, it's a, it's a circumspect way of taking attendance. Right. You have a quiz every day. That's like, you know, a super easy quiz, but it's yeah. it's on like, you know, not the four stages of mitosis, but right. you'll you'll have like a very easy memory. question, and you know if if you're there, you you'll know it's C, and if you're not there, then you right. just don't have a response. I yeah. see. So they're indi those clickers are individual to a person, somehow. You, you're, yeah. you're identified as an individual. Yeah, well, I believe well, UMass gives them out to incoming students to use in a bunch of different classes. Oh, uh, we yeah. can buy them at UMass, okay. but oh. yeah, um, maybe they maybe they do uh, give them I out. I think it's probably bundled into your. Fees yeah, now. yeah, G gives them out. You know, <laughs> <laughs> gives them out <laughs> and charges you for. It. Yes. Yeah. Um, and and that's another problem that I have is like when we do voting, we have a, a you know a, a piece of paper that's an artifact of our vote. So if we have to take a recount, we can do that. With these, you know, it's kind of dubious as to how that would work. Um, Conway uses them now, and um, I don't know what the feelings are on it. I, I think you find out. Yeah. Well, I know that some people in Conway against. don't like it because yeah. now it's a lot harder to pass things like uh, school yeah. budgets. Right, because exactly. You've got a large population, uh, same problem in Deerfield. You've got a large population of people that don't have kids in school. So yeah. this is you know, essentially um, – Putting us in a position where we might we might be you know uh, damning ourselves to not ever pass a school budget afterwards. Yep. Um, so uh, yeah. Again, not not related to the finance committee, but um, a nuance of doing this. I don't have the figure I'm in front of me for the the one that went to capital. I'll, I'll see if I can dig it up in my email. Okay. I don't, I don't wanna, Go ahead. I don't want to discuss this too much. I'm just <laughs> intrigued by why so, clickers would impact. You mean people because they would don't want to vote against a budget yeah. if they're identified in right. town hall? What we do at town hall, you know, out of the 351 towns in the Commonwealth, there's only a small number that don't have a mayor, a mayoral city council system. Right. So we become a uni like a unicameral legislature, essentially. Yeah. So we're not just simply going in and voting as if we're on a ballot. We we bicker in a somewhat visi um, civilized manner. You yeah. know, Dan does a pretty right. good job of making it somewhat yeah. civilized. Yeah, sure. We all get to kind of see, you know, um, people's 
kind of thought process and con <coughs> concerns taking place on the floor, and much like many legislators, yeah. we get to see how people vote. Right. So my concern with this is you'll have a lot of people who you know normally would not want to you know vote right next to their neighbor who may have kids, um, and not want to you know bring more money to the the schools or whatever that year, and 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 may have a propensity to voting no on the school budget all the time. Right. So. I don't know. It changes yeah. the dynamic of how it we does. do a town I meeting. I think it changes. Jim, that. go ahead. Well, I think your point is correct, and I think that's probably the in, in, intention behind this, the desire, is that people would not feel pressured that their vote would be entirely their own vote rather than trying to go along with the crowd. However, I am going to point out that raising hands was good enough for the Roman Senate. <laughs> <laughs> but Rome didn't survive. Has. <laughs> so beyond so there's the cost of I'm wondering about financial implications and right. whether finance committee should weigh in at this point um, th there's the cost of the pagers or whatever they are the clicker thingies um, which is somewhere around 13,000 but there's a $3,000 grant so it's maybe 10,000 correct um, plus some unknown maintenance, annual maintenance. Um, feel like and, I and, mean, and the bylaw, from what I understand, can be bypassed by the moderator. It can be suspended by the moderator. Yeah, suspended to be able yeah. to use yeah. it, but uh, until you get the bylaw fixed. Yeah. yeah. So I found the figure at 16,000 was the one that. Uh, so 16,000. 16,000 okay. is what we have found. Um, from Cassie. From Cassie, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Used and to like 300 or something, the, right? Was there an yeah. annual maintenance in there also? Um, this just uh, has the number 16,000 expected life of the equipment 10 to 15 years and battery replacement every three years, no cost associated with that. Oh, uh, 995 actually, so maybe that is the same thing. So it would cost $995 beginning the second year of operation for maintenance. Um, I feel like this is a, f a funny thing for us to maybe weigh in on, right? Because like it's just Cassie. There's still going to be some other vote and other budgetary process about this. Yep. And this is really kind of just, a s I know it's saying we were, we're asking the town to take the necessary steps, but it's really just kind of a, a sort of <clears throat> taking the temperature of the town and whether the town's going to vote. Yeah, you're right. There's no the finances the associated with this in the article. Correct. So yeah. if it passed and we decide to do it this year, it would be covered from with like within Cassie's mm -hmm. current budget or we would find something from, I don't know what. Yeah, like if we if some the leftover. 10, ARPA so we well, it's, it's, it's a capital, capital item, so it has to be recommended by the Capital Improvement Committee yeah. start, to it, start with. And it wasn't. Right. 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 Okay. Yeah, so I think it's kind of dead right now, but maybe you'd revisit it again in, in the, the spring. Like if this spring. passed, then right. they would be revisit in the spring. Yep. Right. Got it. Oh, go ahead, John. Uh, sorry, I'm in trouble with the mute button. Um, I just... There, I guess the financial implication does come to us approving the purchase. Maybe we don't know how much. I just don't think we're ready to do it. So therefore, I don't think the committee should support purchasing them until we know more about them. We know more how it would work at town meetings. It's what happens if there's more than 300, those kind of questions. It's Anyway, I just don't think we should vote to approve it because money will be spent. That's in 20 words or less, my feeling. So, so do, do you think we should vote on it or not vote on it? That's what I'm thinking. If you're recommending that we just don't vote on it, or we don't give up, we say the finance do, can Yeah, be, make up some word. Yeah. It, it makes it no takes no action. Makes or or against yeah. or something. At the moment, there is no motion right. on the floor. We're just talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would say we. So, John, do you think that we should um, just bypass it and not vote on it? 
not recommend I can't even ask the question. <laughs> just take no take no just action. Take no action. Take no action. It's yeah. Really... Do you think we should skip it or do you think we should make a recommendation? I until we know more about it, I think we should recommend against it. Which well, isn't that taking no action? No, I think that's well, no action. No, I know he's well he's saying until we know more about it. Right. So then we shouldn't vote yes or no. We should wait till we know more about it. In other words, we we can not do anything until we know more about it. Or if it passes and the budget's gonna come in front of us. How about somebody throw a motion out there? I make a motion uh, that we take no action on Article Nine. Second. Any discussion? Okay. Roll call vote, Jim. James Cambius, I to take no action. Beth Brown, I. Dave Sharp, I. Mark Brennan, I. Julie Chalkin, I. John. John Perez, give stay. Okay. So that's 501. You have language from some other thing that yeah. says. Yeah. To take no action. Well, this one would be different. So it's not like, like yeah. I just think what we said was something like finance committee makes no recommendation either for or against okay. this article. That's good because I thought we said something about it not having financial implications, and I'm not sure we that did. that's what yeah, we did. But yeah, but there's, the, there's clear financial implications. That was yeah. about the new state flag. I know, but I, just, <laughs> I don't want to use the same word as well because I don't think it uh, encompasses this. <laughs> This moment. Okay. Besides fine, whatever. Did, can, um, can we oh, do... Go ahead, John. It says, uh, the, the article says that uh, requesting the town to take necessary steps to purchase 300 electric vote tabulators. Um, so I think we need to make a decision whether it's okay to purchase or not. That's my feeling. But to take the necessary steps, don't you have to go through capital improvement and bring it to the budget and all those things? And yeah, yeah. just the but citizens it says petition. We urge no. the town to act on this. So urging the town to act on it could mean that they get it all figured out over the course of the next few months. And at spring town meeting, there's a the the a word plan. the motion is pretty straightforward to to purchase. They're not recommending a sum of money, but they are saying that we should do it. But it has no, if this passes, it has no authority, I thought. Why not? It's just a request. It's just but to it's take a, the necessary steps. Yes, but I mean, the necessary yeah. steps would be spending money. <laughs> well, I know, but they would have to go through all the layers of buying something. And, and the vote, if the vote passes here, it doesn't make this happen. They're just respectfully I, requesting. I, well, I, I'm not sure that. The per that the writing of, that the writers of this uh, petition would agree with you there. I think they think they're asking for the town to buy clickers. No, I know they are, but I'm just saying the citizens' petition. I, my understanding was it doesn't really have any authority to tell the town what to do. Maybe I'm wrong. It was my understanding they're non-binding. Yeah. Yeah, John. So this is basically like a non-binding referendum. Yeah. This is essentially what, he, what my understanding of this was. I could be wrong, but yeah. the town meeting votes on something that's pretty binding. I'm talking about a citizen's petition specifically. Well, had we voted that thing last spring with the um, the kids voting, that would have become a binding thing that we had to that would do, have, right? Mm, that was had a, had like it it required the, the state to yeah yeah but yeah. Anyway, right. we did um, vote on this already. I know. Let's we should go. It. We've already voted this. Anybody yep. want to reopen it for any reason? Okay. Andrea has joined us. Hi, Andrea. Um, so let's move to uh, articles seven and eight. Um, Andrea, do you want to give a little introduction, or do you want us to just start talking about it? Or. Um. Sure, I can give a little introduction. Um, there are several parcels of 
town owned land on Pocumtuck that have never been permanently protected. And we have tried very, the open space committee has explored various ways of doing that um, all for naught until we uh, learned about um, article 97 of the amendments to the constitution. And it turns out we can do, we can use article 97 to permanently protect the land, but only if the land is, has a land use code that is consistent with that. And so what we are asking at town meeting is for two parcels of land, which are on Pecumtuck. One is the Pecumtuck, is the Pine Nook Forest. The other is the area around Pecumtuck Rock. And we are asking that the, um, that the town vote to change the land use code from 930 to 932. And by doing that, um, the land will be designated as, as being under, um, can be under conservation protection, and then we can apply Article 97 to it. Does that make sense to people? So just uh, the one more part of, uh, of uh, uh, by way of introduction is that the land was acquired by the town in like 1926. And there was no means to protect land at that time. Perhaps no one even thought about that. Um, but um, this is something that came up when we submitted the open space and recreation plan to the state, to the Commonwealth. And we were asked, you know, why are so many parcels of town owned land not permanently protected? So this will allow us to do that. So once land goes into Article 97, it's pretty, like it's supposed to be permanent. Um, it can be, this is my understanding and somebody will fix this when I'm done. It can be taken out of Article 97, but it's really, really hard and you have to get the state legislator to vote on it and it's pretty much not gonna happen. So once it's in 97, it is permanently protected. If you do something that you need that land for something different, you have to swap other land for this land. So the reason there used to be four parcels and now there are two parcels is that there is land, there's work we're gonna be doing fixing the Stillwater Bridge, basically, and there's land on one end or the other that is in Article 97. In order to do the work on the bridge, we're going to take that land out of Article 97. One of these pieces, it has to be like similar land. Mm -hmm. One of these pieces was next to the river, so we're going to swap the piece next to the river for that piece. So if we protect this land on the top of the Kumtuck, and then for some reason someday we want to take it out, we would have to swap other similar land for that land. So it would have to be sort of, yeah, go ahead, Trevor. I just had one question that came to mind about this, is that the tower is up there, and I wondered, does that is this encompass that? And uh, so it's the article specifically says, except for the portion of land leased to utilities. Okay. So those are those are not. So it's, it's, it will surround those. Um, okay. Because there that, was question maybe um, oh, a couple of years into my term as select board, where Delta Sand and Gravel wanted to purchase a portion of this land because they wanted to expand, and we had declined to sell at that time. Um, and I just want to make sure that, you know, the, yeah, cell, hey, you. the cell tower work we use up there, um, you know, it is protected and we have that right to still have, not yeah. to expand, but just, you know, wanted that little spot around it unprotected. So, and it looks like it, it is, so that's- Yeah. It's hard, it, it is hard for us um, to, to can't hear, hear you. Yeah. You can't hear what? Can't hear you speaking. You just heard me. <laughs> well, right. so um, I, the the question was whether the land that has the cell tower on it that's on that property was included. And if you look in Article 8 in the body of it, it says excludes the portion of land leased to singular wireless and also the land leased to Western Massive Electric Company uh, for the cable system. So that the land that has the cell tower on it is excluded. Okay, I, that's great. I couldn't track down, one question I had that I wasn't able to get the answer is, um, we get a, a, a 
a nice chunk of change every year, which is personal property taxes on these cell towers. Mm -hmm. We get about $500,000 a year on all of the cell towers together is what um, the assessors told me. But I don't know, like it's not just this one. There's, right. there's more than just one. I don't know how many there are. I don't know how many per cell tower for this one. I think we also get rent for the property that's under it. Yeah. Um, so, so I don't know how much it is, but I would, I would guess it, you know, it, it's enough to, that we should continue to mm -hmm. be able to do that. Um, I, th I think this does this. The other thing I don't know is, um, like how close can you put cell towers to one another? Right. Um, could we put a set, like, would we ever want to put a second cell tower up there, you know? Yeah, could you raise the height of it and maybe have two different on the same footprint? I just was it worried would, about need more area for the Yeah. I was worried about the just the carve out that was there and was it enough for the future or not? Um and maybe if we have to pull I don't know, would you have to subdivide it further? I don't know. I think it makes right. sense to protect it because it is pristine land and we don't want it filled up with all kinds of housing or whatever else but it's good to have what we have it, there this this just as a the cell tower at the south fairfield fire district mm -hmm. we are now putting a second uh, utility up there and they're raising it by 12 feet yeah i don't think the footprint is getting any be bigger right i think right. it's just going higher yep. yeah i think okay. you're right about that okay. yeah do you know when that's going to happen by the way what's yeah. that I imminent I imminent yeah okay that's good yeah, it's weird because you can't get any self-service down there. Right. So <laughs> another argument in favor of this is that, 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 Andrea, I don't think you said this, is that if it is protected, then there is a large run of protected land and um, the, the Open Space Committee is working with DCR mm. to get a, um, like a, a trail, what do you call it? System, a trail system. <laughs> um, a trail system together and advertise it and, you know, do all of that stuff. And they will be able to apply for grants and are more likely to get the grants if it's protected. That is, that is accurate. The other interesting thing is that there are um, places along the Pecumtuck Ridge, which have really interesting um, flora and fauna that we know we've known about for well over a decade. That's not been protected in any way. So this will help us um, with some of the land, um, you know, in those areas. I know there's another um, another tract of land that DCR is looking at as well at purchasing to and or protecting one way or the other. Uh, that Natalie Natalie's office um, and Joe's office got letters on. And and the select board wrote letters in favor of that, and the planning board wrote letters in favor of that. That is. DCR is applying for federal a federal grant or federal grants for two pieces of land which are close to these pieces of uh, these parcels that we're asking um, to have protected now. Um, I uh, we've been sort of told please don't say too much about it because I don't know um, how close the the sale you know the purchase and sale agreement is. It really depends on getting federal money, but it's a um, it will be close to these parcels of land and a nice chunk of, of the land up on the ridge will be uh, will be protected because of that. Jim, go ahead. So I, I have two questions and these are sort of devil's advocate questions. Um, the first is um, if this land has been town property since you said 1920s, um, what, it, what is, it would be nice to, if, if you could summarize what makes it necessary to change its status, why would not it, why would it not be available for trails as just plain vanilla town property? So because um, to get mass trail uh, grants, you have to say that the land is protected for at least 10 years because the state doesn't, the Commonwealth, does not want to give money for a grant for land that you that the town could turn around and sell the next year, so it will um, severely reduce our um, our capability of getting a grant. Um, the other is that there are people up there doing things on on these parcels of land, and there's no 
there's no sort of oversight of this. There, we know that there are mountain biking groups, there are um, hikers, there's no official um, trail system. So if you said, if someone said to me, I'd like to go on a hike tomorrow, can you suggest a hike on Pocomtuck? We don't have a a uh, an official mapped trail system. This will help us apply for monies so that we can create such a thing. Uh, we've been told that uh, we've met with uh, mountain biking groups and they are building trails and they're doing a variety of things. And we've said, do you have permission to do this? And they just kind of said, well, from whom? Who are we supposed to? So it's really not, the land is, um, is not being carefully monitored. By having the land protected um, and being able to write a grant uh, to, to create a trail system, we will be able to better monitor what's going on on the land. So it won't change anything in terms of um, sort of town responsibilities, but it will allow the Open Space Committee to write grant applications to try to create um, a, a trail system. And it's our understanding that DCR on those p parcels of land that they hope to buy with the federal grant, they are planning to create a trail system that they will monitor. And so this will allow us to connect with that and, um, and piggyback on what, um, on what DCR is doing. So, so another example is we, um, the Open Space Committee has tried multiple ways to get this land protected. One of the ways was to see if Franklin Land Trust would um, accept a conservation restriction on this land. They went and visited the land and they came back to us and said, no, there are too many people up there doing weird things, mountain biking, building jumps, building trails. We, we don't want to, to do that. We'd have to restrict who can use the land. We don't want to do that. So this is um, having the article 97 applied will allow us to actually uh, to protect the land permanently. Also, just like to see somewhere a, a, a dirt gravel kind of parking because when everybody goes out, it's like cars are everywhere and they block people's driveways and they block the trails. And so, just once it's all kind of protected, we could all get together and say, "Here's the trail system and here's the trailhead where you can." You can park. Exactly. That is a that is a big part of what the Open Space Committee has has looked at. One of the biggest problems is, yeah, um, parking. And we have some ideas about that. We've been talking to the Deerfield Water Commission. We've uh, talked to people at Eagle Brook. We we um, we have ideas about about those things. Thank exactly. You. Thanks, Jim. You had another question. Yes. Um, at the moment, this is merely an administrative change, so the, there's not any out of pocket expense for the town. Correct. What potential is there? Any plausible reason that there might that this might become taxable land that you know we might want to preserve it as you know to keep it on the on the tax rolls is there any is it even accessible um th there's frontage on um pine nook turn it into housing lots but it's also forested and forest land uh, serves incredible uh, you know um functions for uh Water um, mitigation, carbon sequestration. Do we want to um, to take this incredible land out of um, you know out of forestry? Well, I mean, one of the other purposes of state forests, though, is timber. No. Still, you know, state forests are not the same as parks. <laughs> I think it's still a town forest. Okay, but still I mean, still be managed. You know, one of the points of one of the purposes of forest conservation was wood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So we don't have a motion yet. Would anybody like to make a motion on either or both of the articles? Can you remind us why they're different? Are they belonging to two different They just different separated out the two parts, yep. parcels. Yep. <laughs> oh, I do have one other question. Sure. Andrea, could you spell your last name? For yes, L-E-I-B-S-O-N. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Do I, any other questions I could help with? 
do we have a motion? Somebody want to make a motion? I may, I'll make a motion to so we can get it on the table to, to approve articles seven and eight of the special town meeting. All right. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Any discussion or questions? All right. Sounds like we're ready. Can't hear you. James can be as I. Um, Beth Brown, I. Dave Sharp, I. Mark Brennan, I. Julie Chalvin, I. John. John Fresky, I. All right. That passes unanimous six zero zero. Thank you very much, Andrea, for joining us. Thank you. I'm sorry. It was a little late. Uh, Julie, I don't know if you saw. I did send you an email today that includes a huge map. And it shows exactly the, the two parcels of land that are being talked about. Um, it's parcel one and two on the on this map. And so if that would be helpful for people to see. Okay. I think so. Yeah, there's a one and a two. Yeah. Three. Oh right. Yep. And a three. And a five. <laughs> and a four and a five. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Can't can't hear. There we so, go. Which are the two parcels? Three. Number one and number two. Oh, the one and two on here? One yes. Two. We've already voted. We already it, voted. So, yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted you to know that it was there. All right. We're done. We'll Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew. Bye bye. And then the last article is article. Which five. one? Five. Yes, so that's the right. um, recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee for Community Preservation Fund um, for the 1888 building. Um, are you here for that one? I was not here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I see. Yeah. I have somewhere. So the, the only thing from the CPA fund is the 1888 building. Um, this is a high, very high level um, description of the estimated costs and the source of funding for 1888 building. Um, so the um, there is an owner's project manager for P3. There is an architect, architecture firm um, there, the architecture firm um, has put a design together and has a professional cost estimator who went through and did a cost estimate. The OPM reviewed the cost estimate. They went back and forth a couple of times. The final estimate out of them was seven million dollars for the um, for the contractor, the full project. That includes within it. it it's actually two separate. Um, bids to clearly, not bids, um, estimates to clearly delineate what's the old building and what's the new building, um, which will help for um, to detailing costs to the CPA funds and the non-CPA funds. Um, the, the design contingency within that is 15% on the new building, 18% on the old building, because it's more likely that they'll have problems with the old building. Um, in addition to that, there are owner expenses, stuff that we would pay for, like furniture, FFE, furniture, fixtures, and equipment, um, a utility hookup, testing, moving, that kind of thing. Um, and then a contingency on the contractor cost of 7.5%. So the total of all of that is $8.7 is the estimate. The And I... 
think I emailed everybody, but only maybe an hour or two ago with a detailed estimate if, if we want to dig into that at all. Um, the sources of funding, there is a federal earmark for $4 million that we have been granted for this building. Um, there is a proposal to use 650,000 of ARPA funding. And then out of CPA, um, it would be about 3.8 million out of CPA funds, um, in addition to 273,000 that's left over from the last CPA grant. So that's a little over 8.7 million is the um, fund available. What this would mean, we've kind of already said this, is that there would be no increase to um, taxpayers' bills based on this. We're basically using funds that we have in hand to support. And the CPA funds are funds that are very restricted. I'm saying it not for you guys because you guys know this, but they <laughs> listen to us. They're, they're very restricted in what they're allowed to be used for. So they can only be used for historic preservation, Community affordable housing. Hou community housing and open, open space, space and recreation, right? So we couldn't take this money and repair our roads, for example, or build a new bridge or do culverts or anything like that. It, it's restricting what we can use it for. Or build a new building. Or build a new, mm -hmm. yeah. We can, we can refurbish the old building and we can make the old building accessible. So some of the costs of the elevator um, can actually be... Um, out of the CPA funds, but um, how much will this is, will this basically empty the piggy bank of the Community Preservation Act funds? Pretty much. Um, do you? I don't have that in front of me. I was going to go grab it, but um, but I didn't. If okay. memory serves, I don't think we'll be doing any borrowing out of it, though. Right. That's no that's exactly right. So yeah. you will have funds in the coming years of. Which Probably four hundred and fifty thousand plus every year. That's that's just the revenues from each year. So at the end of twenty twenty four, it was four point five million, four five twenty two three nineteen. So we had four point five million of that. We're using what three point something. Yeah, Which but I think that four point five million included the reserves, right? It does. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so other. that is not, some of that is reserved for open space that we Correct. can't use. Some of it is probably, they, we might have spent all of the, the housing oh. one on the senior housing thing. Oh, but. right. I, I'm just partly thinking about, you know, if we absolutely have to, there's at least something left then conceivably for the other historic building that we're renovating. Right. Yeah. So. Um, I, I've been hearing a lot of pointed remarks about <laughs> Yeah, so I've actually started sounding, and this is kind of off topic. You guys want to spend time talking about that right now? <laughs> do we want to vote this first? Or? Can I ask a question? Yeah. How do we replenish our CPA funds? So it's a surcharge on our taxes okay. um, that we voted many years ago, and it's, so it's like a 2%. Tax. Three percent. I, I thought think. it was two, but maybe maybe it might be. Is right. it three? Is it What's 3%? CPA? Is it three percent? Oh, it's okay. Three percent of everything over a hundred thousand dollars. But it's it's three percent on your of your taxes. Yeah. Not the, of the tax amount that you pay. It's not three percent of the value of your right. house. Right. Right. And then and then the state kind of gives it if it's a good year, the state might give you up to like seventy percent or something like yeah, that. Yeah. It, it because good we're a three percent community, we get the maximum amount that the state would would be able to to give us. The huge it's related return. to house sales too. Is that what's that? Is there any relation to the turnover of real estate in our like the state taxes that are paid when you you know buy a house? Yeah. There's nothing to do with the real estate. I think it's sales just, your, it's just, just your just your the, the fund the fund that the state uses to. It, does that come from that? Uh, I don't know what I don't know I don't what know fund what is it that they use they to use. to support us. But because we're three percent, we can get matched up to a hundred percent. It's I don't know that they ever every we have they we have a couple, couple of times. times yeah. but yep, pretty yeah. close. Yeah. Um, so so the undesignated fund balance at the end of the fiscal year was three point six million. 
but that included an unrealized loss, and that's why um, they were only asking for 3.585 out of out of the undesignated. And in using the hundred thousand out of the fiscal 25 revenues, um, that leaves a hundred thousand that we expect in revenues in fiscal 25 that aren't being used that will go into the undesignated fund at the end of the next fiscal year. In addition to whatever the state gives us. No, that's that's that includes that what includes we includes okay. what we expect to get from the state. Um, the estimates from the state for this fiscal year were a little lower because mm -hmm. uh, the Boston is included and things are a little tighter. So we did kind of lower the estimate of what they were going to give us. Mm -hmm. So all we can do is guess. Go ahead, Mike. I'd just like to say that the uh, CIPC committee voted to recommend this at a priority one because it's got um, a uh, whole set of funding sources and then I think one of the things we haven't talked about here is the federal earmark as well. Um, not only would that potentially go away if we don't go forward with this, I don't know that we would ever get a federal earmark for something like this again, yeah. um, given how much work it took just to get here. So I'm not a huge fan of depleting funds for projects, but this one would be a really good one to, to do. Um, and uh, like I said, the CIPC recommends it. Okay, John, do you have your hand up? Yeah, I have a few questions. Um, the current, oh, what, what's the 1888 building going to be used for in the future? Town Hall, right? Right. Anything else? No. Um, the current Town Hall, what's going to happen to that? Unknown. If we yeah, so there are a couple of options. Oh, hi, Dan. Dan Pilata is here. Just thank you for joining us. Um, we're going to go ahead and talk about this and then we'll go to it. So I, there's no absolute purpose set for this building yet. No. Um, I have an opinion, which is that it would make a really nice senior center. I mean, it's set up very nicely that it could be used easily as a senior center. The building has some problems. It's it's an old building. It was cheaply built when it was built. It's what nineteen sixty, so it's yeah. seventy something years old, um, sixty something years old, um, and it you know, the heat's not great. The air conditioning is not great. It, it's the not a leave. wonderful <laughs> building. All the reason we're leaving, but, but yeah. the way the way it's set up, um, so that's one option is that it could be a temporary temporary being many years senior center. Another option is that if we put senior center somewhere else, um, this could be taken down. Mm -hmm. Police station would stay, it it's newer. This could be taken down and it's being eyed as a site for senior housing mm -hmm. um, as part of that project, but that would be longer term. Um, hey, um, I guess as far as the senior housing goes, I thought that was going to be where the Catholic Church is, and it was going to be handled by exactly. Yep. So that is the plan. So what? What? what, what in, in what you're saying, then we'd have two sites for senior housing. Yes. Yeah. Um, Might do a second building. Yep. So, but in any instance, there's a cost to the old building, either yes. refurbishing it so it can be used, or to take it down, and. I think that should be part of this decision, in my opinion. One thing I'll uh, also mention is not everybody would be moving over, like rec department. There's other entities that would still probably be here, but the majority of town hall will be over there. It would free up space to kind of, you know, the vets. There's, you know, there's other ways that we could use the building in the meantime. But yeah, there, there has to be a plan going forward and a study and. Wait a second, though. I mean, one of the whole rational, one of all justifications right. for moving the town right. off to the 1888 building is that this building is too expensive to maintain and it is suitable. And now we're talking about renovating it anyway. No, so everybody's all of a just talking. It's not too expensive. It's not. It's not. You know, it's not suitable for town hall. I don't believe. But I, I mean, maybe there's a question that would be good for a senior center. But there's other feasibility studies going on right now too. Nothing's set in stone. <laughs> Not. Why wouldn't everybody be? Bless you. Thanks. Sorry about that. 
Um, can, I, can I further on a couple of more questions? Uh, the congregate. We, we have another question on the floor right now. So we're going to talk about that and then we'll come back to you. Um, okay. So every, everything changes, but when the idea originally came, I think it was Dave Wolfram's idea originally. The thought was we were looking for a place for a senior center and none of the buildings were great for a senior center. If we renovated that using CPA funds and now this grant, um, and most of town hall moved in there, then this could become the senior center, essentially without renovation, um, just use it as is. Um, the rec department wasn't, um, wasn't designated to move because the thought was that the senior center would be in here and this space is better, like this is a better space for the rec department than than that space is. So that's why, and the rec department's the, the only one that didn't move other than essentially the senior center and the nurse, which would be co-located with the senior center, wherever that ends up. This seems like we're basically doubling the amount of town office space and not saving any money in it. Not gonna save money unless you need a new building. I mean, you're investing in something so for the future because be, this place yeah. is clearly not tenable okay, long term. Okay, if it's term. not tenable, then why are we talking about using it? Well, the time using it, it's, you it's, can't have it both ways. Either it's not tenable, or it's perfectly I fine. Don't, I don't think anyone's center. talking about it's, it as a permanent, yeah, place. It's like a permanent senior center, like forever. But you're still going to spend money Keep kicking to make it tenable for no, the short no. term. Well, there's a feasibility if you talk study to any of the going town on. Employees, the, the, these offices are pretty unusable. They if are. You want it to be cool in the summer; it's hot. If you want it to be warm in the winter, it's cold. The seniors can do their activities here without sitting in these offices for eight hours. Yeah, but the senior center administration has already, you know, turned up the, you know, yeah. complained about the office space in the 1821 building. Right. Yeah. I don't, I don't. I don't disagree there. Study I, right I, now. I, I personally, I, like, I, I, I hope that this building isn't reused. I hope we tear it down personally. But I, I think that what, what the point is, is this, the, the state of this building is still tentative. One of the things that we're kind of overlooking a little bit, though, is we still have to do something with the 1888 building, whether we refurbish it or not. It's mm -hmm. still there. It's still rotting in place. So, you know, if we say, hey, if we move into the 1888 building, we still have to maintain another building. That's true right now, actually, with yes. the 1888 building. Right. Like, either way, we have to maintain the building. So this way, we, we get $4 million from the state one time. You know, I, I don't know that we'll get that kind of money again. Right. And we can't use that on this one. John, you have a question? Yeah, the Congregational Church, is that um, considered historic? So to be eligible for CPA funds, no. that's one question. And, and related to the church. And another question is, what are we planning to do with it? There's a feasibility study going on right now that encompasses the church and two other buildings, in, one in Waitley, one in Sunderland for the senior center. But that's all that's happening at the moment. We've refurbished the kitchen. It's being used as the library at the moment. That's about us, and we're fixing one of the roofs. I don't know. I it looks to me like I was spending a lot of money, and I know it's money, CPA money that we already have set aside, but it's still money that we're spending, and we have buildings out there we don't know what we're going to do with. That's my opinion about it. But at least we'll have a nice building to put town offices in that should last for another 30, 40 years. Years. We'll say 50. Yeah, 50, 50, sorry. 50, 60. 50. Yeah, you're pardon. investing in, in your, your it's been what 150 in your resources. Yep. <laughs> Maybe you could do that with the church. Well, Maybe, but we don't have four million for it. Yeah, I mean, prior to this project, we've been basically rearranging the deck chairs in the Titanic with three buildings. And this is an opportunity to finally like fix one the right way. And then from there we can chip away at the next one. But I think if, if we keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results, you know, it's kind of silly. So I, I, I don't know. I, I know we've been discussing a lot. I don't, do we have a, um, 
make a motion on the floor? We don't think so. We don't, no. no. I, I'd like to make a motion to recommend Article 5 as written. Second. Do you have a second? Last night. Okay. Um, Give me the, oh, well, you didn't. Here. Here, I'm sorry. Who was the second one? I will make it. Stay there. Or I can move it to you. Um, so I think right now it, it's a, a. Nobody cares what my opinion is. Sure we do. <laughs> I do. So thinking thinking about the different buildings, um, just my opinion, 1888 building, I think it's a pretty building. And if we have the CPA funds and we can rehabilitate that to a building, and especially with the addition, I think it has the potential to be a, a really nice place for town hall to be. It saves that pretty building. It puts the people who are working for the town in a building that has like new HVAC and new air conditioning and, you know, should be functional and, and useful. So I, I feel like that's a worthwhile project. Brenda's going to um, stay another five years if we do this. I heard that too. <laughs> <laughs> In that case, I'm going to vote. Yeah, for right. <laughs> <laughs> it's tempting, but. <laughs> so, so I think that's worth saving. The old church building, I think, is a pretty building also. I think that the sanctuary side of it is lovely. Um, I don't think it has any insulation in the the sanctuary side. I, I'm I'm waiting to hear what the heating bills are like over the winter with the library in the in that side of the building. Um, so I think it's I, it was donated to the town. I think that's kind of iconic, you know, New England type of building. Um, it's in I think halfway decent shape, especially with the repairs that we've done recently. The inside looks great with the floors refinished and all that. So I think we should continue to use that. I'm not sure it's a good building for a permanent, like a permanent senior. Maybe it is for a permanent senior center. I'm not sure it's enough space. Um, but I think regardless of whether the senior center is in there or not, the town will use it as community meeting space. And it will be a useful building that that's for the town. Um, this building, you know, Whatever, I, I'm no. ambivalent. I think it it makes a good short term spot for the senior center. I a great indoor I pickleball think, court. <laughs> indoor pickleball. There you go. You <laughs> <laughs> could fit two in here. There you go. I I'm just works. envisioning they're doing a senior center feasibility. This is me being grumpy, and I apologize. But they're <laughs> doing this senior center feasibility study, and they're going to figure out that there are a whole bunch of seniors in this in the area and that our population is aging and by gosh, we need all this stuff. And they're gonna recommend something that's gonna be 30,000 square feet. Half that. And it's gonna cost $20 Same million to no. build a new Five building. Huh? It'll be 12 or 15 million and it'll be about 15,000 square feet is what okay. will be recommended. So we have yet another, and then what are we going to do? That's build not, another not fifteen million much. dollar building on top of the library mm -hmm. and the garage and the, you know, and take on another. All the seniors will have to get rid of their annuity. It, yeah, exactly. And so if we can find a solution that is functional, that's not fifteen million dollars, I think we should do it. Mm -hmm. Is is fifth? Is that is fifteen million dollars? Uh, uh, Concrete number, or is that no, just no, 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 of course no. not. That is, is it even close to concrete? No, neither, it, neither is fifty, it, neither is twelve thousand or fifteen thousand square feet. We have we okay, don't. so we'll know at the end of the year. Said that senior housing is going to play a role in how this all plays out, too. It is, yeah, yep. so see where that ends up. Yeah, yep. I would move that we leave this question. And okay, let's go ahead and just because it's <laughs> um. All right, Not that I have any you guys, uh, Jim? Uh, James Camby is I. Beth Brown, I. Dave Sharp, I. Mark Brennan, I. Julie Chalvin, I. John Pereski, no. Okay, so that passes 5-1-0. Um, so, Dan, thank you very much for coming. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Great insight. Appreciate all your input. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's it.
that's the warrant. Um, is there any reason for us to meet before town meeting? I certainly can't think of a reason. Do we post one just in case? I, it, we yeah, might. I, think I mean, we'll post the start what happens if a bill minutes. from a previous year comes yeah. up yeah. between now okay. and the meeting? All right. <laughs> That's so always, always so a thought on my mind. Post but, a meeting bef so right we'll before the town. Post a meeting to start 15 minutes or half hour or something before, um, before town meeting in case we have anything we need to discuss. So anything else for this evening? I want. I I'm ninety nine percent sure I won't be able to make the town meeting. Yeah, ninety nine percent sure he's not going to make it to the town meeting. Okay. Sorry, but well, that's commitment. <laughs> um, I have just a question, sort of process, procedure, yeah, accounting issue. Um, when we hear about the free cash being certified from last year as a pretty healthy amount. Are we ever going to have a sort of conversation, discussion, just sort of to see, or should I already know what it is from looking at it myself, like how that came about and from what pie that came about in terms of Do you in terms of how our budget process worked for last year and how we think about it going to the next year? I mean, it's obviously a very healthy thing, mm -hmm. but it also means something, I think, about how we predicted the – Future, potentially, or it doesn't because certain surprises may have happened. But can we just dedicate a, a future meeting to just have a well, I, discussion I, about what that what it means and how and Brenda can address that for a little bit right now. I I think I can. Okay. I you know I've 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 considered what what had happened that that we had a high free cash yeah. certification, and really most of it it really boils down to the big project that DA had. So we so we had an extra three hundred and fifty to four hundred thousand in the coffers that that we wouldn't normally have um, in right. inspection in permits. Yeah. Um, so that's that's really most of it. But that's so now we're one point three, one point four. Mm -hmm. So and and so that's and that's, that's normal. normal. One that point two to one point four is more normal. Okay. Yeah. So maybe that's all I needed to hear. That that's yeah. Yeah. And I have a whole amount. history of that. I'll bring that to the next meeting so that you can see okay. the history of our free cash certifications. Okay. Yeah. Are you, yeah. Anything else we talked about? Oh, wait. Adjourn? No. John already said that he was. All right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. We have a second. 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 Jim? Uh, James can be as I. Beth Brown, I. Dave Sharp, I. Mark Brennan, I. Julie Chalp, and I. John Pereski, I. All right, that's unanimous. Funnily enough, thank you everybody for thank coming. Thank you to, to see you. Thank you. Bye bye.